Archaeologists digging up bones in the mountains of northern Spain discovered the fossilized remains of an archaic group of humans unlike any other ever seen, now called Homo antecessor. Here, we are going to explore some of the more interesting things about this creature, including their environment, tools, and diet. The species name is a Latin word meaning, explorer, pioneer, or early settler. This name was assigned, due to the belief that these people belonged to the first human population on the European continent, between 800,000 and 1.2 million years ago. Indeed, the oldest human footprints found outside Africa, dated at between 850,000 and 950,000 years old, were discovered on the storm-lashed beach at Norfolk, England. The footprints were left by a small group of adults and children. The prints are believed to have been made by Homo antecessor, the same species thought to have lived in Spain, and are the earliest artifacts to have been found in northern Europe. They walked through a startlingly different landscape from today's, along the estuary of what may have been the original course of the Thames, through a river valley, grazed by mammoths, hippos, and rhinoceros. The pattern of the print suggests at least five individuals heading southward, pausing and pottering about to gather plants or shellfish, along the bank. Magnetic signatures within the sedimentary deposits, indicate the footprints were laid down between the two most recent geomagnetic reversals, around 780,000 years ago and 950,000 to 1 million years ago. When the footprints were made, the estuary occupied a grassy, open valley surrounded by pine forests, with a climate similar to that of modern southern Scandinavia. It would have been inhabited by mammoths, rhinos, hippos, giant deer and bison, which were preyed upon by saber-toothed cats, lions, and wolves. With the river, plain, and brackish pools there was abundant food including prey animals, shellfish and edible plants. However, very soon in geological terms, perhaps within 50,000 years, the weather got much worse, and the ancient humans probably retreated back across the land bridge to the continent, and further south. The vegetation at this time is consistent with the cooler beginning, or end, of an interglacial period. The cool and humid montane environment encouraged the growth of olive, mastic, beech, hazelnut, and chestnut trees, which Homo antecessor may have used as food sources. The footprints mark the only evidence of early humans, from one million years ago, so far north. Paleontologists had believed that hominins of the period required a much warmer climate, but the inhabitants of prehistoric Norfolk had adapted to the cold, suggesting that they had developed advanced methods of tool-making, hunting, clothing, and sheltering much earlier than previously thought. But are these really the footprints of a Homo antecessor, or some other ancient human? This story contradicts with the evidence of Homo antecessor, from the much warmer climate of northern Spain, which indicates they were living a very basic lifestyle, and using very primitive tools. The evidence from Spain suggests they would not have had the technology to survive in a cold climate. Because the fossil record is so patchy around one million years ago, the best evidence for hominin activity comes from stone tools. The interesting thing is that in Africa at this time, the stone tools are known as Mode 2, which include the classic hand axes, that are not found in Mode 1 toolkits. In contrast, outside of Africa we only see Mode 1 tools, that are basically just rocks cracked in half. However, a black flint hand axe, dating to around 800,000 years ago, found on a beach in England near where the footprints were found, refutes the claim that there were no sophisticated tools outside of Africa at this time. It's more finely crafted than it really needs to be for the purpose it was intended, so somebody obviously wanted to create a tool that was nice to look at, as well as being useful. Rather like a Swiss army knife, this hand axe could be used in a variety of ways, for example, scraping, chopping and butchering. There was even a blunt end, so it could have been used as a mallet for smashing and bashing, and it was also quite sharp. But if Homo antecessor only made basic tools, then who made this hand axe? Could these actually be the footprints of early Neanderthals? In fact, there is evidence from the foot impressions, that the larger individuals were quite stocky, just like Neanderthals. But the first Neanderthals don't show up in Europe until several hundred thousand years later, allegedly. Back in Spain, evidence suggests the climate at the time was generally warm and humid, with shifts to occasionally cooler weather around one million years ago. These conditions are similar to those for the region about 800,000 years ago. 
At this time, the climate was warm wet and relatively stable, in contrast to the climate in England, which was much colder. Homo antecessor probably migrated from the Mediterranean coast to inland Spain, when colder glacial periods were transitioning to warmer interglacial periods, when warm grasslands dominated. They may have followed rivers while migrating, including the Ebro River of northeastern Spain and the Thames in England. This all changed about 600,000 to 500,000 years ago, when conditions became relatively harsh and cold. It is not long after this, that ancient humans living in Europe start to develop Neanderthal-like features, many of which appear to be adaptations to very cold environments. The diet of Homo antecessor appears to have included large amounts of meat. Many of the remains at both sites in Spain are of large mammals that have been butchered, and some of the larger bones have been broken to obtain the marrow. Young horses and deer are particularly common at Homo antecessor sites. The remains do not indicate whether the animals were hunted or scavenged, but both methods of procuring food were probably used. It is also likely that they supplemented their diet with plants. It does not appear that these people lived permanently in caves. Rather, they visited them for certain activities or at certain times of the year. They were probably nomadic, and followed food sources. In other parts of the world, reliable evidence of fire usage does not surface in the archaeological record until roughly 500,000 years ago. Indeed, there is no evidence Homo antecessor could wield fire and cook dinner. Instead of using fire, these early Europeans probably physiologically withstood the cold, such as by eating a high-protein diet, to support a heightened metabolism. Homo antecessor may have also hunted and ate others of their own kind, leaving behind the oldest known evidence of cannibalism, suggesting they ate everything that moved, or didn't move. Gruesomely, 80 young adult and child Homo antecessor specimens exhibit cut marks and fracturing, indicative of cannibalism. Analysis of ancient remains hints that these hominins were cannibals because human flesh was nutritious, and that humans were easier targets than other types of large prey. Therefore, everything was on the menu, including each other. Bones of Homo antecessor individuals, at the Spanish archaeological site, displayed distinctive signs that they were cannibalized, including human tooth marks, cut marks, and fractures to expose the marrow. Those bones were mixed in a pit, with bones representing nine other mammal species. Homo antecessor seemingly had plenty of prey to choose from, so why were humans on the menu? To find out, researchers used computer models to calculate how many calories Homo antecessor would require per day. Then, they estimated the caloric payoffs of various animals, including humans, and the energy that would have been needed to catch them. They speculated that Homo antecessor hunters would choose their prey based on a balance, the most calories for the least effort. Previous studies showed that while humans provided a moderately nutritious meal, there were other animals that packed far more calories per bite. But if hunters had to spend less energy to catch human prey, they would benefit even if the caloric count of human flesh was lower, according to the important study. The researchers found that while human bones were the most represented, they accounted for less than 13% of the hunter's caloric requirements, most of which came from rhinos, deer and horses. But unlike humans, those animals come at a very high energy cost. Analyses show that Homo antecessor, like any predator, selected its prey following the principle of optimizing the cost-benefit balance. Considering only this balance, humans were a highly ranked prey type. This means that, when compared with other prey, a lot of food could be obtained from humans at low cost. The only question is whether the victims were members of their own clan, or hapless strangers. But in the long term, cannibalism is not a good evolutionary strategy, so perhaps that's why they went extinct. Most researchers consider Homo antecessor to be part of an early and variable Homo heidelbergensis population. The problem is that it shares more traits with modern humans than it does with European Homo heidelbergensis. But some dental and cranial features suggest Homo antecessor is descended from the more primitive Homo ergaster, aka African Homo erectus. There are two scenarios for the evolutionary relationships of Homo antecessor to other species. Scenario number 1, Homo ergaster gave rise to Homo antecessor in Africa. 
Then about 1 million years ago, Homo antecessor spread via the Middle East to Europe. In Europe, Homo antecessor evolved into Homo heidelbergensis, who were the ancestors of the Neanderthals and Denisovans. Scenario number 2, Homo antecessor evolved into Homo sapiens, via an unknown species in Africa. In this scenario, Homo heidelbergensis is off the branch leading to modern humans, as it is the descendant of Homo antecessor. If so, African Homo heidelbergensis would require a name change, probably to Homo rhodesiensis. However, another paleoanthropologist is skeptical that Homo antecessor was ancestral to Homo heidelbergensis, interpreting Homo antecessor as an offshoot of Homo ergaster from Africa, that disappeared after a failed attempt to colonize Europe. To further complicate the story, a French paleoanthropologist has postulated that human fossil remains from Algeria, usually classified as Homo ergaster, and originally named Atlantanthropus mauritanicus, are actually Homo antecessor fossils. This is because 14 of the 15 dental features listed for Homo antecessor, have also been identified in the Middle Pleistocene of North Africa, aka the Middle Stone Age, around 800,000 years ago, this would mean Homo antecessor is the same species as Homo mauritanicus. But the Algerian fossils remains are much larger than Homo antecessor, and dentally similar to other African populations. Nonetheless, some paleoanthropologists still recommend reviving Homo mauritanicus, and to classify all specimens of this region as Homo ergaster mauritanicus. Homo antecessor has a unique combination of features in the cranium, teeth and lower jaw, that are collectively different from other fossils, rather than any particular feature that distinguishes it from others. These features show a mix of modern and archaic traits. Brain size is approximately 1,000 cubic centimeters, compared to 1,350 cubic centimeters for humans today. Body size, height, and shape are also similar to modern humans. The skull has many modern traits, including a modern-looking face, hollowed cheekbones, and projecting nose. Archaic traits include a low forehead and double brow ridge, similar to Chinese Homo erectus, aka Peking man, and Neanderthals, and a protruding occipital bun at the rear of the skull. The teeth and jaws also have primitive aspects of dentistry, including very robust teeth. The modern-like face of Homo antecessor, strikingly similar to that of modern humans, may have a considerably deep ancestry in our genus. Indeed, the modern human face may have evolved, and disappeared, multiple times in the past, which is not unlikely, as facial anatomy is strongly influenced by diet and the environment. In other words, the modern-looking face of Homo antecessor is actually very ancient, and our species has retained it. Whereas Neanderthals are the ones whose faces changed more during their evolution.